You never really know how much fun one of these restorations can be, especially when the weather turns bad. And the last couple days we've had some interesting weather. And this is what we're dealing with. I don't even know how to describe it. But I know I'm not going to get anything painted today, that's for sure. It was pretty funny. I didn't realize I looked like a Nanook of the North here. Nanook of the Ferrari dealership. <laughs> how funny is that? Nice hat. But somehow during the restoration, we always find little jobs to do. Something that'll be uh, challenging and interesting. Now before I get started, I always like to get some inspiration. And uh, in the case of uh, RFZR, boy, I have many pictures to remind me of what some of the good times we've had over the years. We have really, I have really enjoyed having this motorcycle in my collection. And in my case, sometimes I don't enjoy the day uh, that, that I actually am living the day. I come home and uh, a week later or so I look at the video or I look at the pictures a couple of years later and I realize, wow, that was a pretty good day. And I always think how truly lucky all of us that live in this area of the country, even though we have these rough winters and uh, some unpredictable weather, the scenery, the roads we have to ride on, they're beautiful. And I have been to a lot of other parts of the country where the weather might be a lot better, but maybe it isn't. But the roads aren't even close to being what they are in our area. I remember so many times on a summer day getting up so early, having that coffee and getting out right at the crack of dawn, getting up at a mountain. The roads are still a little damp and it was just there's such good memories. This bike brings back so many good memories. That's why I'm really looking forward to seeing it in its new paint job. And what's happened over the years, it's evolved from being a bike we first bought when Luciano found this and we went and picked it up in the middle of the winter and it was leaking gas and had all kind of other problems and Luciano helped me with several of the repairs and the biggest one of all was the carburetors and we had changed the exhaust system several times, made parts, painted it, changed the handlebars and it's evolved into the motorcycle it is now and the last step of it is the restoration that we're doing right now. And that's why I think it's always so important to spend the time that I'm doing on this restoration and we're looking at we're going into the fourth month very soon of about four hour a day shifts roughly and it, the, the end result is I think we're going to have a really spectacular mo custom motorcycle when we're done. And there's so many good memories, there's so many to rides with so many to friends and so many to things that happened. So many to times I get pulled over riding this bike. Not, not all good memories, by the way. Now, well, whether it was street riding or the track days, there's just a lot of great memories. And it's one of the reasons I was willing to spend the time to do this restoration. And if you've watched many of, or maybe all of, the restoration videos, you know this bike has become a part of my life, one way or another. And it's an ongoing saga. It isn't over yet. And I just needed a little motivation this morning. I was up late last night chopping ice and shoveling and hoping everything would melt. And it's a mess out there today, so we're going to just do some little detail stuff in the shop. Look back at some of the great memories we've had with the FCR. And boy, that's the reason I love that FCR. I love the sound. Just such a fun bike to ride. You just can't imagine the good memories this bike brings back. And there's really no better reason to restore a bike than you just enjoy riding it. And especially if you enjoy riding it with your friends. It just couldn't be any better. Yeah, a lot of good memories. I'm now I'm motivated. I'm ready to go to work. On the last couple of days, we got these parts. We're ready to paint the yellow. The wheel is ready to paint the black. But there's always little details to work on. And there's always some things I save for this kind of a day that you really can't be outside. <laughs> Unless you're a penguin. 
And there's no way I want to risk with all the time I know Luciano's put into his cafe project. I don't want to risk that that paint won't be anything other than the best we can make it. The wheel is coming out great and there's no, see, this is the whole point that I try to make. Many times in the past when I've done this kind of stuff, I've rushed or I've pushed it and tried to try to paint on a day like, uh, you know, that it's going to rain or snow or something and gotten myself into deep water. I'm, I'm going to do the opposite now. I'm just going to wait for a day that it's appropriate to paint. And we have plenty of other little, little jobs to work on here. And one of the steps I've been saving for, saving for a rainy day, saving for a day like today, I wanted to do the flat black. I've already done the flat black on both of the fairing parts and the main fairing. I still have some of the ultra ultra coat left over. It's water-based paint. I wanted to do inside the seat today. It's a great thing to do on a day like today. The tank bottom is done. And when I did the fairing parts, it's just that final little touch that just makes it that much nicer. It's a final, like the cherry on a Sunday touch. Unfortunately, you can't really see it's <laughs> it's Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover Premium. It's from Lowe's, and I I use this on the instrument, the bars that go up to the instrument. It looks like I may have to buy another one. And the reason I didn't do this in the past is I wanted to paint on days that I can get outside and paint, even if it's windy, even if it's cold. But today, impossible to paint. You can't you can't paint outside in the middle of an ice storm. Not because I'm going to do this with a brush. I want to be real careful. What I'm going to do is take the bar off first so I can get in back there. You really don't see this, but you know, and it's just the final thing. I put so much time into this and I just don't want to have anything that if I have to take this off the bike, I don't want to have to look inside and see whatever the inside of these fiberglass parts are because these are, these are track day parts. They're not really factory, the kind of things you buy from the factory that are plastic and they have a finish inside. This doesn't have a real finish. It's, it's rough fiberglass. But I think the paint just adds a nice little touch. And in the case of the fairing parts, even the, the main part, I don't want to look down into the fairing on a nice sunny day and see uh, anything but flat black. The one place in the world that I think flat black is good. You know, with the bar removed, you can see all the places we reinforced, double and triple reinforced this. Even in the back, that's all reinforced with carbon when we first did this. Because number one, we're going to, at some point in time, figure out how we want to make the camera mount, the rear camera mount, which is a critical part of this. And I, maybe some of this you do see when you take the bike apart or whatever. But it's just, to me, it's an extra step, and I see it. That's all that matters. Now, I always think, in a, any job like this, the devil is in the details. The devil is... There's always little things you're prone to want to skip over or say, ah, nobody will see that. or, And and probably that's correct. But in this case, just when I think of the amount of time that I've had into this project and to leave one little detail that I could make better, uh, kind of not happy with that. But anyway, the, the for somebody that might not have seen the previous videos on this, we're using water-based paint that dries flat black, the Rust-Oleum. The reason for that is pretty simple because if any paint were to drip over the other side and I want to get right up to that edge, that's one of the criteria of this is I don't want to leave an edge. So what I do is I, I'll just show this. I've shown this before, but this really works pretty good. Actually, it works real good. I'm getting right up to the edge. Then what I'll do is I'll take a clean paper towel and if I have to, a drop of Windex, and I can just go right down that edge. And what happens is I wind up with an absolute perfect edge.
Now I'm just putting a coat of carnauba wax on this because I did I did have to go around the edges with some if if it doesn't come right off you can just take some simple green and put it on there but this paint is old enough now that a coat of carnauba wax will be a good investment. And with perfect edges and the inside all blacked out, just one more little detail. And it's, in my opinion, it's the little details that make the difference. Another really small detail, one that probably nobody will ever see unless, <laughs> unless you watch the video. But the whole, the whole trick is don't get suckered into doing this with paint. That if some of it gets out on the edge here, you can't just wipe it right off with... I, I use simple green on this. And then I put, well, here's exactly what I did here. A little bit of carnauba wax just to make sure that that simple green didn't take off or hurt in any way to finish but that paint is old enough now it shouldn't really matter probably doesn't I'm just in overkill mode here now one of the things like I think about the details and this is really not funny and it's not really uh, well something that matters to a lot of people but it matters to me I see a lot of people, they do a beautiful restoration, do a lot of work on a bike, and then there'll be one or two parts they just don't clean up. And usually the last thing to go is the bolts or some part that you say, ah, oh, why, did, why did they just do that one more thing? It would have been so much nicer. Well, hopefully I've gotten at, at least trying to avoid that on this job. I'd like this to be, I'd like to have all the details, all the edges, all the black inside. And we've really gotten, everything is done, I think, to the best of my ability. And that's, and plus by trying to share that information with you, maybe your bike will be a little cooler too. Now, even if you didn't do a restoration, there's nothing to keep you from polishing and cleaning and waxing and flitzing and, and whatever. Whatever level of customness you'd like. I don't know what the right word is. Anyway, I'm real happy the way this came out. And now on to a couple other little details I've been waiting to do. Well, one of the details I didn't want to leave behind on a whole restoration, and these I just got recently from Bolt Depot. They're stainless. So what it means is they're never going to rust. They're never going to corrode. And they have a nice finish, but I want to make the finish. And I bought enough for all three of the discs. They're all basically the same bolt. But... Even these bolts, I want to polish them up, and they will stay polished for years. Stainless steel is just perfect. It never rusts. So by replacing this hardware little by little as I go through the bike, I've got the windshield. I've got, except for very special bolts that have to do special things, or in the case of some of the things like that, that the, uh, the bolts that hold the front forks on need to be grade 8 bolts. But these bolts don't need to be grade 8. Now, what always works well on stainless, I've always found it works well, is the Red Rouge. Boy, these polish up. I can just touch it with the wheel and they polish it up. Oh boy, I'm, in, I'm impressed how nice these are polishing up. Wow. It's amazing to me how quick that polished up. It's unbelievable. Usually some of, the, some of the grades of stainless you really have to grind away at. This one not. Well, the bolts are a good grade of stainless, that's for sure. But that, that really, wow, what a difference in a, in a matter of uh, seconds. But we got, we got 20 of these to do. I'll do them off camera. This is, this is going to be a, a boring next 15, 20 minutes. Now just as an example, I wanted to show... Just a few seconds on a buffing wheel. What a nice difference that makes. And that, because that's stainless, that is never going to rust. To me, that's a detail worth doing. Now, the only problem is, of course, 
<laughs> we've got 20 of them to do. I grant that that is a very small detail, but I can I can confirm something that m maybe you would innately know. I know if there's one rusty bolt on a motorcycle, you bring it over to where the bikes are all parked, and immediately somebody notices it's a rusty bolt. So if you don't have any rusty bolts, then they tell you something else is wrong. But anyway, these really did come out nice. Now in the course of doing these, what I did, I thought I'd just do it for my own uh, knowledge. I tried the blue compound, the white compound on several of the bolts, and didn't really seem to make it any better. But the red definitely worked right away. So I would say it's not critical when you're doing stainless what compound you use. It's just, just funny information that I, I think is, I think it's funny. See, the, the, gray color, the gray compound, it says, is for stainless steel. Well, when I tried it on one bolt, eh, it didn't really bring the bolt up right away. This one doesn't say anything about stainless steel, the blue. <laughs> and yet this one, the blue worked as good as the red. The gray that's made for stainless really didn't, so you go figure. The only way to notice stuff is just do a test on your own. And the compounds are about five bucks a piece at Harbor Freight. It doesn't pay to skimp on compound, that's for sure. Now while I'm detailing things out, let me just explain. These are curvy girls, and it's with a K, curvy girl. It's not a porno site or anything. So here's what I know about this so far. These things have worked over the years. I've had them for at least five years. It's, it's been great because what they do, it's so easy to check the air on the tire. Number two, they're a little bit lighter than the stock steel ones. So sometimes that works in your favor in terms of balance. That, the, the real reason for doing it is because you have these easy to check the air and I tend to check the air every time I ride the motorcycle. I have what I want to, I know what I want to have. I don't want to have a lot more or a lot less. I want it to be right in that range of about four pounds where I know I'm comfortable. The reason is we ride on bumpy roads, so you really can't use track day air pressure in the tires or your, your teeth come off, especially my teeth. So anyway, here's the point. I want to remove the anodizing, but I want to do it in such a way I'll leave the cap on. I took the valve out and I'll leave this to cover the threads. I don't want to, I don't want to destroy that O-ring. It's already in place, so I'm going to be very careful when I buff this out. But usually, you know, and you can see what happens. Anodizing, this is why I'm not crazy about a lot of different things that get anodized. It wears out. And when it wears out, you can't touch it up. Paint, you can touch up. You can't just take a brush and touch that up. So anyway, that's the whole point. I want to have this, when the motorcycle was red, this was appropriate. I'd like to have it, especially with a black wheel, it'll look polished aluminum. Just one more little detail, one more little thing. And I think, well, I don't know about other people, but I think my restorations, a lot of it is about the little details. And that's what separates, in my mind, a stock motorcycle, that's fine. But you put the little extra effort into polishing bolts and doing these kind of little things, getting things to match, getting rid of all the flat black on a bike. It's all in the eye of the beholder, but, but my eye, that's what my eye likes. Now, speaking about details, I always think on any restoration, even the smallest detail, it can cost almost no money, take very, very easy to do, and it makes a difference. Now, an example on our FZR polishing the frame was literally one of those labor of loves while I had the bike in its early stages. I spent a lot of time, I spent a lot of time even at Luciano's house doing that. And the swing arm too, major, major work. But there's a lot of little things that make a difference too. On the 650, there was a lot of these parts that were flat black. I don't even remember which ones, but I know there were a lot of flat black parts that got painted over. And I think it just almost no money and a few hours made the bike a lot nicer and a little bit custom. Now when I got the R1, I wound up making several 
parts from scratch, carbon fiber, including these little heel plates. And it made a big difference. Whenever I see a stock bike, I think, hmm, just a little nicer. And there's always things like making the exhaust system that are relatively time consuming. And of course, you need to uh, have some special resin to do that and stuff. But polishing parts, like the exhaust on this, that changes the whole look of the bike. When you have an air-cooled bike, just, just the polishing of some of the engine parts and the cases changes the whole look of the bike. And again, the beautiful part is, there's almost no money involved. And I always think it's funny that there's some things you can do to, uh, to well, actually to any motorcycle, that cost an awful lot of money and basically people either don't see it or they say, oh, no big deal. Now, a good example of something that was very low dollar and I thought worked out pretty nice twice for me. These Norton mufflers were 80 bucks a piece. And from Dime Cycle, they have held up perfectly and they sound great and they fit right on. And there's always, I call them the little details. When I had the, the master cylinder off, polishing it instead of having it flat black. The camera mounts that I'm in, and they're all over all the motorcycles, all polished. The polishing is very, it's no money. And it's just time, and I think it adds a nice little touch. And it seems like every bike is unique that has different parts that they're worth polishing. And again, just like today, very a very easy upgrade for no money at all. Almost no money at all. Now, one of the things when I first was doing the FCR, I polished the triple the top triple tree, and that was another another relatively big part to polish. But again, it no money involved. Now, it's always nice if you're on a budget, if you can do things to personalize a motorcycle, customize it, that don't cost a lot of money. There's, there's some criteria, and they, they make the bike more personal to your taste, which of course is in the eye of the beholder, and in some cases even makes it a performance upgrade. Another little detail that I thought in the very beginning I wasn't going to be a big deal, and when I put these the 250 handlebars, which rise up about an inch, inch and a half higher than the stock ones. I had this, I have two of these, and I painted one to match, and I thought, mm, I don't know if I don't like, well, if I don't like it, I can always go back to the black one. Well, it turns out that most of the people I asked, other people that I trust their artistic uh, taste, and they all said, yeah, that looks pretty cool. But it's all in the eye of the beholder. And when I made up the scoops, that go on the front of the R1, trust me, those are a big, big job to make. And they are not available from anybody that I've ever found anywhere at any price. But it's a little detail. But when you look at it from a lot of angles and then you park it next to a stock bike, it changes the whole look of the bike. And in my case, it, almost, it didn't cost me any money because it was using scrap material to make it up. Now, whenever I try to explain to somebody why I don't like flat black and why I like shiny black, I, I use the, the poster, child, poster child, the instruments on the GS. To me, they look cheesy and plasticky. And for about, oh my God, less than a dollar's worth of paint and maybe an hour of labor, changes the whole look of a motorcycle. Same thing to the mirrors, being shiny instead of flat black. And it's just my personal thing of not caring for flat black parts. And it's where that comes from. Part of it is from working in a machine shop. I know that when things don't have a good finish on them, you paint them flat black. So I always think to myself, what are they trying to hide here with this flat black stuff? But it's just personal anyway. Just like my personal taste for doing a motorcycle over, I like the stripe on the front fender and... I always like to restore a bike so it's a little bit unique, it's a little bit different than a totally stock one, yet it's not off the deep end with a tree stump for a seat or a, who knows what, a coffee pot for a gas tank. I like it to look like the factory might have made that motorcycle. And that's, that was my, 
one of the things with the FCR restoration, I wanted it to have the look of maybe Yamaha made that bike, and people would ask me a question. So as this day comes to a close, we didn't get anything painted, but we did get a lot of detailing done, and I have hopefully passed on some information that you can use. So our FCR project has lots of little details, lots of little things you might not even see the first time you look at the bike, but you'll see them somewhere down the road. And before we can do much on this, we really do need a day that it's not raining ice, snowing, or the wind blowing 100 miles an hour. Now it was really cool today, I got to talk to Luciano at length. He's got his little cafe racer out in the garage, got the motor back in the frame. We're going to have to run up there and take a look at it. He's got the seat, we have the tank. Wow, this is going to be, I think this is going to be one special project when it's done. And, and I hope all the little details come out, give you something to think about. Those little details that you think nobody's going to see, people see them. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you share our passion for restoring old motorcycles. And thanks for watching.